Um, God bless you guys. Let's get to the word. John chapter 10 is where we're going to begin. Put it up on the screen because it's missing on my notes, so I'll read it from the screen. John chapter 10. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice, and they come to him. So who is the shepherd? Okay, come on, say it more. Who is the shepherd? The shepherd is Jesus. Who are the sheep? You a sheep? Somebody looks at your neighbor and go, bah. That wasn't bad. You're a sheep. How many of you know sheep ain't that smart? It's not a bad thing. It's okay. I'm not saying you're dumb, but I'm just saying we kind of are dumb, you know? So, so sheep aren't the smartest animals in the barn. But they don't have to be. They roll around. They get stuff in them. They hit trees with their head. Right? But because they have a good shepherd, they don't have to be great. They don't have to be gifted. They don't have to be strong. They got a shepherd with a staff that will protect them from the lion and the bear. They don't, they don't have to be awesome. They don't have to be anything about them. But there's one thing that a sheep does know and a sheep is good at, discerning voices. There are many voices that are happening and every single one of you is following a voice right now. Every one of you is following a voice right now. It is the voice of depression, the voice of hopelessness, the voice of rage and anger. Whatever the voice might be, if you do not know as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple, in order how to discern his voice versus your voice versus the enemy's voice, you're not going to make it as a disciple. The word disciple means this. One who follows closely and listens. One who follows closely and listens. How are you supposed to make disciples when you're not one? You're trying to teach people. Man, I want to start a DG. Okay, great. Please, we're going to do it in faith. We're going to help you start a DG. Holy Warriors 4, starting this Tuesday. It's going to be incredible. However, do you know how to hear God's voice? Are you being led by emotions because they have a voice? Are you being led by debt because your debt of finances does speak to you? Are you being led by failure because failure has a voice? Or are you being led by the voice of the shepherd, the voice of Jesus? What makes you a disciple is not by being a part of a church. That's not enough. You can sit in a church but not be listening to his voice. What makes you a disciple is not being a part of a DG. You can sign up but then you never show up to get discipled. What, it's not going to the Holy Wars class. You can be in Holy Wars and check in the score the whole time from the football game. Are you submitted to a voice? I didn't get saved in order to follow voices of men. I got saved in order to follow Jesus. Jesus is the reason why I am here. Jesus is the reason I come to church. Jesus is the reason I worship. Jesus is the reason why I have joy. I don't got to be depressed. Why? Because I got a shepherd whose name's Jesus. I ain't got to be in danger. I don't got to be all worrying about what's happening in the economy. Why would you worry when you got a shepherd like Jesus? He leads you to green pastures. He's going to put you beside still waters. If you got Jesus, you got everything you need. Jesus has a staff. He beats away the wolves trying to come at you. Those demons can't touch your house when you got a shepherd, but you got to be submitted to a voice. He says, my sheep know me, and I call them by name. Listen how powerful that is. I call them by name. Uh, let me ask you a question. Is it really that awesome, and is really your goal in life to have a thousand followers on Instagram? Is really your highest goal to have 10,000 followers on Facebook who know your name? Let me ask you this question. Is it better that somebody imperfect who literally probably you'll never meet in your lifetime knows your name? Or is it better that God in heaven himself knows your name? I want to tell you something. You ain't got to worry if you know my name or if they know your name, if Jesus knows your name. 
The Bible said the disciples came back to Jesus and it said, man, after he'd given them authority and they said, man, we cast out devils in your name. Even the demons flee from us. He said, listen, don't get excited that the demons flee from you. Get excited that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and that I know your name. What better thing if Jesus calls your name? Here's the deal. Maybe you've never fit before. Maybe throughout school there was no group. You just, you just didn't find a place that you meant. Everybody has a place with Jesus. And Jesus, if he knows your name, then guess who else knows your name? The devil. Guess who else knows your name? All the enemies of heaven. Guess who else doesn't want to be around you? Do you remember when the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts tried to use the name they didn't know? It said that they came up and they saw these demons. And these demons were in this man. And they came up and they said, in the name of the one that Paul serves. That's what some of us do. My pastor's Pastor Marco, so ha! <laughs> Devil's like, who are you? Marco, I know. Who are you? He says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And the demons pounced on him and ripped him apart. Tore his clothes off. He ran out naked. Ah! We have believers running away from the devil instead of running toward the enemy. The Bible said that when David had the sling and Goliath was standing in front of him, he didn't stand there and just talk to him. He yelled at him, talked trash to his face, and then the Bible said he ran at Goliath. It's a different posture. Why was he so confident to run at the thing that everybody else was running away from? Because he knew the shepherd that he had. I don't come to you in the name of man. I don't come to you with swords and spear. But I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows your name. Maybe you're like, nobody knows who I am. He knows who you are. Maybe people have passed you up. He didn't. Maybe people don't pay attention to you. He does. He knows your name. And it said that they will enter through and the voice of no other. They won't follow the voice of another. You see, in the church, we have become used to voices that we should think are foreign and alien to us. It should be foreign to you. It should be alien. Literally, the sheep, when they hear a different voice, they turn and they run from that voice. You should be looking. When fear comes, you should say, what is that? Fear? Afraid? When worry comes, worry? What, what, what's worry? Oh, oh. When depression comes, depression? Loneliness, huh? But it's not foreign to believers anymore. It's not foreign. So you just live with your depression. You just live with your loneliness. But God said that there is no other voice that these sheep will follow. They know my voice and no other voice do they listen to. It's not suicide. It's not depression. It's not loneliness. You're not paying attention. It should be alien to you. It should be alien to you that you're getting depressed. It should be alien and foreign to you that you don't feel you're full of hope. The Bible says that uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples, and it said that uh, in Matthew, uh, I'll tell you later, it said, just put up the next scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and I'm going to go quick, and it said that he was telling Peter and all the disciples, he said, I'm going to go to the cross. On the cross, I'm going to die, and then I'm going to raise and all that. Peter's like, come with me, Jesus. Like, get away from everybody. Just come here. And I don't recommend doing this, but, Jesus, but Peter began to rebuke Jesus. So he's like trying to, you know, like, hey, I know, you know, maybe our meal last night, rub, you know, eat your stomach okay, you know, maybe you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed, but Jesus, you off today. You're, you're, you're not speaking right. This doesn't make any sense. Listen, this doesn't make any sense to me, Jesus, so it can't be right. Let me ask you a question. If it doesn't make sense to you, does it mean it's not truth? You ever approach God that way? Oh, it doesn't make sense, so I'm just not going to do it. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Is that how faith works? Does faith work when it all makes sense to you and therefore God can do it? Do you have to give him permission and it won't happen until it makes sense to you? You're not going to do good as a disciple. So he looks at Peter and this is what he says. Get behind me, Satan. 
not talking to Peter. He's talking to the spirit behind Peter. And he says, listen, he says, you are a trap for me because you are seeing things as a mere human being. You're not seeing it as a disciple. You're listening to your own reasoning. You're listening to your own logic. And it doesn't make sense to you, but disciples deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Disciples deny the word is soul. You got to take, your feelings don't always line up with Jesus. You're going to have to submit those. Or you're going to be run by your feelings all 2024. Your mind and your thoughts don't always line up with Jesus. You're going to have to submit those. He's got to renew your mind. Your will and desires, your will, this is your soul. You don't always want what Jesus wants for you. You don't always want it. But you got to submit that because what God wants, your will be done, not my will, God. And you're going to have to say it again, and you're going to have to say it again, and again, and again. It's going to happen every single week. You're going to leave church today, and you're going to have a chance to pick up your cross. What do I mean? The moment that your will and God's will cross... That's how you pick up your cross. You choose God's will instead of your will. The moment you leave this church and you have a chance to cuss out your wife, you're going to have to choose your will or God's will. The moment you get back home and your kids are, you're going to have to choose every day. We got to choose to stay sheep. We got to choose to be led by a voice. Matthew 4, 19, Jesus is walking on the beach and it says he comes. Peter's there. They're casting out nets. He says, come follow me. Come follow me. You're going to listen to my voice. You follow. It says immediately they drop their nets. Now, listen, they don't know who this man is. Why are they just, it's that easy? Like, I read this scripture, and I'm like, you don't even know who this man is. And he goes, hey, who are you? Doesn't matter. Come follow me. Okay. What? You got to understand. In Jewish culture, this is what happens. Every child until the age of 12 studies to be a rabbi. Every child whose family wants their child to be anything. Because a rabbi in Jewish culture is a superstar. It's not movie stars. It's not a concert star. It's not musician. That's not the super. The superstar in Jewish culture is rabbis. So when you're 12 years old, you go in front of a rabbi and the rabbi will test you. He's going to ask you questions like this. Quote the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23. Quote it all to me right now. And at 12 years old, you have to know all the first five books of the Bible by memory. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, that's Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And the board went in, and there was a nail three inches wide, and there was a linen pole, and all of it memorized. He'll look at you and he'll go, um, tell me the significance of Deuteronomy 21, and cross-reference it, please, and tell me how it uh, appeals in the historical context to Joseph's story in uh, Genesis 42. Can you tell me how they relate? He's going to ask them questions, and based on their answers, he's going to either dismiss them, but every once in a while, he finds someone who he thinks worthy to teach, and he says this, come follow me. The real translation, he said, come eat my dust. Eat. Why? Because in that culture, there's a lot of dust. They wear sandals, so they get dirty. So he said, you're going to follow me. Come eat my dust or come follow me. This is what it means. I believe you can be me. I believe you can be me, so come follow me. When Jesus calls out to you, can I ask where he called out to you were? Were you on a street corner about to light up? Were you drunk when God called out to you? you got to understand that Jesus called out to you in whatever state you were at. He said, I believe you can be me. Come follow me. So when Jesus calls out to you, he's also saying who he thinks you are. He says, I believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. I know things about you you don't know yet. You got potential that you don't even know about. I can work with your mess. I can work with chaos. I can look at nothing like in the book of Job, and I can hang the world on it. There's nothing. Let me get the universe and put it on that. Ooh, that's a good spot. That's God. Come follow me. I believe you can be me. I think you could talk like me. I think you can walk like me. If you'll just submit to my voice, you can act like me. You can get results like me. You could love people like I do. 
Romans 8, 14, for all who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. All who are led. You don't lead. He leads. Are you leading or is he leading? Remember, if you want to be a disciple, you're going to have to be led. You can't lead anymore. Well, I have a five-year plan. Okay, well, you're not being led because there's no way you're led by the Holy Ghost and you already know what you're going to do in the next five years. Uh, impossible. Impossible. What does Matthew say? Jesus says, he said, look, and James said this as well. They said, if you can plan and say, I'm going to go here, I'm going to do this or do that and all that, he said, that's evil. He said, what you should say is, if God wants me to go there, I'll go there. If God wants me to have that, I'll have that. If God says... What are we doing in church if we're not listening to the voice of Jesus? You know what we're doing? We're being entertained. If the voice of God is not touching your life in the Holy Warriors classes, you're not focusing on the voice you need to be listening for. Every curriculum we write, every sermon Pastor Marco preaches, every sermon he is praying and everybody is praying, you'll hear the voice behind our voice. You got to listen for the voice of Jesus. Is he speaking to you right now? Is anything that's being said, maybe it was a scripture I read, but you heard God speak. You better write that down because if you're not writing down what God says, you're telling him it doesn't matter what he says. You see, a lot of church people, we come to church without anything to write down what God says. And that means you're just a church member. You're not a disciple because disciples come ready because they high and high esteem God's voice and when God speaks they want God to know I care about what you say so they're ready to put it down remember you'll never remember something you don't write down Acts chapter 16 this is amazing verse 6 through 7 it says that Paul and Silas they're on this trip and it says that they're going all to all of these places to preach to the Gentiles and it says that at one of the cities they're about to go into, it says they're restrained by the Holy Ghost. So they're traveling along, obeying God, and as they're obeying the Lord, they're just going to every city they can to preach the gospel to everyone, because that was what God said last. Listen to what I just said. That was what God said last. What did God tell you last? Because if you haven't obeyed what God said last, you're not going to hear anything next. You will be in a season and you will park in Christianity until you obey the last thing God said. It could be pick up the phone and apologize to your mom. It could be go ahead and forgive this person. It could be what did God say last? You got to be led by the voice. And when you're in obedience to the last thing God says, he speaks the next thing. You got to be in momentum. How do you get in momentum? Obedience gets you in momentum. Obedience makes the wheels start going forward. When you're listening to the voice and obeying the voice, you're in momentum. And remember, God cannot steer something that's not already in movement. If you're parked, there's no steering. God can't lead someone who's sitting still. You got to obey the last thing God said, and then you get in momentum. Okay, I, I picked up the phone and I asked for forgiveness. Okay, I apologized to my wife because I was definitely a jerk. Okay, momentum. Now God's going to speak the next thing. And then he's going to say the next thing. you got to get a momentum. I've done Holy Warriors 1. I'm in Holy Warriors 2. 3. I might as well just go to 4. Woo! Momentum. Finish what you begin. Look at your neighbor and say, finish what you begin. Don't let procrastination steal from you the blessing. Some of y'all are like, man, I've been here 20 years. I took Holy Warriors 1 about 15 years ago. It's really cool. Every time they're up there and we do those graduations, I always think about it. Maybe I should get back into it. And then the next day happens, you forget all about it. Acts uh, chapter 8, 26 says that uh, Philip is in a cave. This is powerful. And it says he's in the cave and the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, I want you to go out onto the road that goes toward Gaza. Now, you got to understand, Luke is writing the gospel, is writing Acts. Luke is writing this. So Philip is next to him telling him the story to write down because Luke was not there. So Luke is there asking Philip, tell me about it. Philip says, an angel of God, uh, Luke, came to me and asked me to go out to the road. The next verse, it says, and the Holy Spirit told him to go up to the cart. So he was so sensitive, he knew the difference between the voice of an angel and the voice of the Holy Ghost. 
He knew the difference between the voice of an angel and the voice of the Holy Ghost. Are you listening that you could say, Luke, don't write that down. That wasn't the angel that time. That was the Holy Ghost. A sensitivity is born in your spirit. God leads you by sensitivity. Exodus 3, 2 through 4. Says that Moses is out. Jeremiah, if you could come up to the keys. Says Moses is outside. And he's walking and there's a burning bush. The bush, nothing, there are no voices. God's not speaking. But there's a bush that's burning, but it's not being consumed. It says that as he walks, he looks at the bush, but he could have passed by. But it says he stops, and the scripture says, I will turn aside. Moses says to himself, you see, the most important conversations you have are not with other people. They're with yourself. So he says to himself, I will now turn aside. I'm going to focus on this thing. I'm going to turn out whatever I was doing before. I put that aside, and I focus on this. And the Bible says the moment God saw he turned, he speaks his name, Moses. Do you understand if he wouldn't have turned aside, God wouldn't have spoke? Because God will not compete with the other voices in your life. He waits for you to turn them down. God is calling to so many of you. He wants time with you. Jesus created everything, y'all. The earth, he said it's good. The water, he said it's good. The mountains, he said, those are good. But only when he created man, you and me, did he say it's very good. Why? Because everything that happens on every day, when God created it, the next day, the day before had to happen in order to prepare for the next day. What do I mean? He first creates land. And then the next day, he creates animals that go on the land. He first creates water. Then the next day, he creates fish that go in the water. He creates a sky. Then the next day, he creates birds. On the sixth day, he creates you and me. What does God do on the seventh day? Because finally, God made something that he was to enjoy. God made something for himself. He wants fellowship. He wants to lead you by the voice. He wants you to be addicted to the voice. Isaiah, or Psalm 53, verse 2, God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. God looks over heaven, and he looks down from heaven to seek for anyone who's seeking him. He seeks to be sought. His desire is to be desired. He wants to be wanted. Every morning when you wake up, do you know that God gets excited? Because he doesn't sleep. So he's been waiting for you so he can speak to you. Mark 4, when you have the word of God, you have everything you need. When you have him speak into your life, you have everything you need. Why? He tells them on one side, we're going to cross over this lake. All nature heard Jesus say, we're going to cross over this lake. The weather heard Jesus say, we're going to cross over this lake. The thunder heard Jesus say, we're going to cross over this lake. The lightning heard Jesus say, we're going to cross over this lake. Your trials heard Jesus say, you're going to get to the other side. You came into this year with a word for the year. A disciple does not, is not moved by what they hear, and they're not moved by what they see. They're only moved by the voice of their shepherd. Stop looking at your family and saying, there's no way God's doing it this year. This is more chaotic than it's ever been. My sister's crazier than she's ever been. My kids, you're looking at the circumstance. 
But there was a voice that spoke to you before this year began. And he said, your family's part of the harvest. There was a voice that told you that this is for me. And if God said it on this side of the storm, it's because the word was needed to get you through the storm. You have everything you need when you have God's word. Every person, close your eyes. I've run out of time. Put that QR code, please, up on the screen for Holy Warriors 4, but everybody closing your eyes. Darion out here. Darion. I was going to do a whole kind of just encouragement for you guys. I've run out of time, so I'm going to do this part now. But I was going to have my wife and my son come up. Matter of fact, still come up. Baby, come on up with Max real quick. Just bring him up here. Judah, come on up. We won't do everything we were going to do. It's fine. I don't need the chairs or anything. Thank you. They'll just stand next to me. This is my family. This is part of my family right here. Come on, Max. He's got to hold the microphone. Do you see that? That boy wants to preach. All right, million. Give the microphone to mama and I'll let you talk on this one. Come here. Everybody listen. Holy Warriors 4 is about to come up. Now, you might be like, you know what? I've done all the Holy Warriors, but please understand. Jesus is in the desert. The devil's about to tempt him, Matthew chapter 4. And the Bible says that after the devil tempts him with the rocks being made bread, he said, man will not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word proceeds mean continuously proceeds. It keeps on coming. You cannot get the spoken word of God if you're not in the written word first. Until you get into the written word, you will not hear the spoken word. Some of y'all, you know what you need to do? Mom, dad, you need to get that growth book out. You need to come to Holy Warriors 4 so you can be trained on how to lead a Bible study in your home. Because until you speak the spoken word, the written word out loud in your house, God can't invade your children's rooms the way he wants to. God can't invade your business the way he wants to. Why don't you just come for six or seven weeks? Just say, you know what? Train me. I want to lead my family in the word of God. I want the word to be there for my children so they don't have nightmares anymore. That's not their portion. They shouldn't be having bad dreams. I don't want to have my wife have anxiety attacks anymore. We're pregnant right now, y'all. We're six months pregnant. Our second baby's coming. Uncle Judah, can you hold Max here? I worked out with him and my arm's about to give out here. This boy became big. Hey, Maxie, I want to ask you a question. I want you to say, what did you learn from this reading? Jesus, it said he comes and he gives rest for our souls. Come to me who are weary and those who are weak. And what does Jesus tell us? Jesus helps me. Jesus helps me. That's awesome. So Jesus helps me. Let me just tell you this. If the boy, and this is what he'd been talking about all week. We read that out loud with our family. And he said, Jesus helps me. So you know what happened a couple nights ago? Max is there, is in bed, and he walks into the dark in a couple of rooms. And then he comes back and he's like, I'm not afraid of all of the dark, of anything. I'm like, you're not? Why? Because Jesus helps me. He's with me. So that might not seem like a big deal to you, but the word of God is a seed. Every single day you have a chance as a father and a mother to introduce the voice of God in a way that everyone can understand. Baby girl, why don't you just share one thing that you got from that scripture of that story you're reading it this morning. What's one thing you wanted to encourage the people about before we pray? Yeah, I, um, we, this week in DG we read about the yoke and how Jesus says the yoke that I give you is easy and the burden is light. And when you think about a yoke, I always get that picture of literally what it is where the wooden piece is on the cows, but it's not just on one. 
it actually yokes two together. And so what that symbolizes for us is when Jesus says, take my yoke, it's a yoke that you and Jesus have on together. We're in co-mission together. So as we're becoming disciples of him, we're learning literally like he's talking about from our father. We're learning his voice. When you're yoked together with Jesus, of course you're going to learn his voice. And that's how you get to train others is to hear that same voice that you're listening to. But yeah. the, the burden is light because literally Jesus is holding it up with you. There's a balance to it. And so that's what really spoke to me this week. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Guys, it might seem simple, but that alone could change somebody's life. It takes you about 15 to 20 minutes to do it with your family. Just speak the written word so that you can hear the living voice. You need, as disciples, we have to be led by a voice. Is your house filled with the voice of the world? You might have to shut some of those things off. Stop watching The Bachelor and Love is Blind and all of these stupid shows. You're filling your house with the sound of the world. But it's really good. I just love it when people are in love. I understand. But why don't you just like congratulate people doing it God's way? And especially if you're single, you don't need that. Don't be messing around with that. When you're single, Adam was put to sleep when God brought him Eve. He's put to sleep. And he's working inside of him doing surgery. A single person's job is to be in surgery. Your job is to stay asleep in surgery. And when the time's there, God brings you who you're supposed to be with. Please understand, you need the written word in order to have the spoken word. I want everybody to close their eyes real quick. This scripture says this. My brother Judy here, he was able to share this last service. Some of his testimony was awesome. Watch the service if you're able. It said Isaiah 55, 1 through 3. Let me read you some of the written word. Close your eyes. Let this wash over you. Anyone who is thirsty, this is Jesus speaking, come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine and milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that doesn't give you strength? Why pay for food that doesn't give you any good? Listen to me. You will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. I love, I promised and make an everlasting covenant with you. I will give you unfailing love. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on his name while he is near. Every person I is closed. The presence of God is here. He's near right now. I don't want you to wait another second. If the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart, if you're feeling the tangible presence of God, if you know that something is happening in this room that's special, I want you to focus in on Jesus. And I want you to call out on his name right now. Seek him while he might be near. Every eye is closed. Focus in on Jesus. I'm so in love with you. You're beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. I fix my eyes on you. You're Focus in on Jesus. Now just call out to him. Ask him to help you. Yeah, I'm so in love with you. Say, I want your voice. You're beautiful. I want your voice. So beautiful. Yes, God. Yeah, I fix my eyes on you. You're beautiful. Focus. Tell him right now. Open your mouth and begin to say, God, I need you. I need your help. Say your kids' names to him right now. Say your situation you need help with. Call on his voice while he is near. Press on his voice while he is near. Need you, Jesus. Need you, God. I fix my eyes on you. We need the voice. You're beautiful. Come on, just one more minute. Come on. Just focus in. Having a conversation right now. Tell him you need him. I want to be led by you, God. I need your 
need your voice in my house. I need your voice in my children's lives. I fix my eyes on you. You're beautiful. So beautiful. Come on now, I want you to sing these words with us with your eyes are closed right now. Come on. I'm so in love with you. Speak to him. You're beautiful. Speak to him. So beautiful. Nobody else matters. Focus on God. Yeah. I fix my eyes on you. You're beautiful. Yes, you are, God. So beautiful. Come on, I'm so in love. One last time. Sing it to him right now. Yeah. We give you praise. I'm so in love with you. We need your voice. You're Every person right now, listen. Is he calling you right now? Is he calling you maybe for the first time? Do you know Jesus? Or is he calling you into a deeper relationship? Is he calling you? Do you have peace with God? If you leave this building without peace from God, you did not get what you came for. If you say, Gavin, that's me. I don't have peace with God. I want it to be very simple for you. I need you to move from where you're at, and I need you to come up here right now. I don't have peace with God, and I need it. Come up here right now. Come up here right now. Look at all these people come and give them a hand. If you say I'm the second person, you say, you know what, Gavin? I, God is calling me deeper. I have not been serious about his voice. I've been wishy-washy about my life and my Christianity. Come up here right now. Come up here right now. Don't wait. This is the time to move. While God is near, seek him while he may be found. He's near right now. There's a heart of repentance that needs to come over people. Come on. Come on right now. Give them a hand. These people are bold enough to look like this in front of you. I'm not going to be just wish-washy about this anymore. I'm serious about your voice. Come on, come on up. We're waiting for you. Come on up. Every single one of you. Come on, come on. We see you. God sees you, brother. God sees you, sister. This is for God. This isn't for anybody on your right or your left. This is for God. We're going to say a prayer. This prayer I want everybody to repeat. Because we're all a family. Some of these people are receiving Jesus for the first time. This is the last prayer. Right now, we're going to all pray together. Please repeat this after me. Then they're going to be continuing to pray with you. They're going to tell you about baptism, etc. Let's all pray. In Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. I thank you for being my Savior. For being my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Forgive me of my sins. I repent from the bottom of my heart. I want you to fill it. Be my boss. I don't want to boss my own life anymore. Help me, Lord, to be a disciple. God, help me to listen and be led by your voice. I submit to your leadership. I let go of my old ways. I let go of the things that you were telling me to let go of because I dedicate to be a disciple. Thank you that you died on a cross and that you rose from the dead. Help me forgive myself right now. In Jesus, from this moment forward, I receive your peace that I am going to heaven and that I know you as my shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him a hand right now. Every single person who's in this building, God bless you. We'll do more ministry as we go. Come back on Wednesday. Holy Word is 4 starts on Tuesday.
Make sure you show. Let's pack out this place with people who want to lead small groups in their home. Come on now. We'll give you the resources. You just got to make up your mind to do it. If you need prayer, stay here because there's going to be people going to come and pray for you. Do not leave until you're prayed for. We care about you and want to be able to pray for you. God bless you. Every person, thank you. What an incredible Sunday. Keep praying for Pastor Marco. Keep praying for the team that's in Africa. Keep blessing them. They're over there serving God.